Um, Mika, you you're right. You got your you got your makeup here. You got your mirror. You got your piss. Okay, we're good to go then. How'd you know? Uh, just a hunch. Hey everybody, <laughs> uh, Elise here with Mika, aka R.I.P. Mika. Or is it Rip Mika? I thought it was. I always say R.I.P. Mm -hmm. So I don't want anyone to think I'm like Rip Van Winkle or anything. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not a mystery sleep man. <laughs> I just want them to think I'm dead. Uh-huh. I have a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. We're both uh, very makeup girly. Well, we talked about, <laughs> talked about this a little bit before because I know I am not skilled at all when it comes to makeup. Mm -hmm. I think you... I've seen you with really great makeup and I've seen you doing your makeup. And It's I, like I have to... I have to do a deal with the devil that morning <laughs> in order to get the talent. Yeah, you got the tools. Let's see if you have the talent. It was I real... love that you are still in a package. I <laughs> may have got them specifically <laughs> for this show. Also, my makeup's always really dirty. Oh, mine is too. Like, there's always like a bunch the of... bottom of this bag is just. Oh, this is broken. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I have this powder here, which I'm pretty sure is cracked into a million. Yep. Oh, yep. cool. Yeah, and you still have your. Your stickers on. Yeah. <laughs> really? These are tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> She's like the Mike Tyson of Twitch. Oh. Uh, yep, that's what they call me. Those are hydrocolloid? Yes. They're little. I only just got them yesterday. They're called Starface. Right. And they come in this little cute package. Oh, I yeah. use the Mighty Patch ones all the time. Oh, Mighty Patch is incredible. I love the status. It's gross, but the satisfying feeling of taking the patch off in the morning and yeah. it sucked out all the white shit. And you get to look at it. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, and then stick it into your patch collection. My skin box. You have a skin box? Like gold My member? Gold member. <laughs> No. Any, so remember when that breath freshener thing where you could pull out a strip yes. and put it on your tongue? Those always reminded me of the scene where he pulls out a piece of his skin and like starts <laughs> to put it in his mouth. Oh, so anytime no. anyone would be like, do you want one? Mm, oh. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, so you, ha you do oh, I was going to say you don't have as much as I do, but you do have a lot because. Yeah, I have a bunch of is eye stuff. Is this like all the makeup you own? Because I have another box at home that's like all the shit that I'd never use. This is like what I wear on a regular day. And then like some extras. Like this is my highlighter. I don't normally wear this, but sometimes if I want to make my eyes pop. I usually only have one at a time. And my personal, I can't give you many makeup tips. This is one. Yeah. I always buy the travel size of mascara. Okay. I buy like a quality I mean, brand and I get the small one. I do feel like full size ones get wasted after yeah. a while. Yeah, because you're not supposed to have it for that long, even yeah. though I have it for a little bit longer than you're supposed to. They're cheaper. It's like 10 bucks to get a quality. My travel mascara one. tip is if it doesn't do the noise when you open it, it's old. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I was at home and just about to do my makeup, I would have just put on my lotion, yeah. which has like an SPF in it. Cause I, I'm a- I use PM. Yeah. Oh. Because I don't like how thick like the day ones are because Wait. it's sunscreen. So are you not putting SPF on? No. <gasps> because- I know it's really bad considering I'm so fair. <laughs> no, it's just, I am such a huge like sunscreen proponent, proponent yeah. especially. I put it on my face every single day. You're going to thank yourself when you're, when you're my no, age? I didn't bring it. I have another one that's their vitamin C, like oh, okay. SPF. And I put that on this morning. That's good. For the first time in many years. Right now I'm using the La Roche-Posay one and I like it. Yeah. But Sometimes I've had instances where I've bought sunscreen that has too much zinc in it, and then I put it on, I just have a white mask. <laughs> like Mark Zuckerberg. But I did already apply that this morning. So now I'm just gonna... Yeah, just get, get into going. it. And I'm gonna start with this MAC Pep Prep and Prime that I've never <gasps> used. <laughs> so let's kick it off with that. I love this so and much. <laughs> well, I'm gonna start off with this Rescue Balm Red Correction that I've never used. <laughs> As I was realizing that I... We're shooting this today. I was yeah. like, shit, I should go get some stuff. So I was gonna get a color corrector for the dark circles under my eyes. Like, cause I heard you're supposed to use like a peachy. If you have a red that's 
more to like the right. You have to use a green. If you have a red that's more to the left, you use a yellow. To the right? Oh, you mean like, like on, on the, the color spectrum? wheel? Oh, okay. Because yeah. it's supposed to be directly across. Yeah, if you have like blue, you use a more orange tone, like yeah. Michael Bay. That's his strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was considering that, but then I got overwhelmed because sometimes there's too much selection. Yeah. And I panicked. So this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> have you ever used bl uh, pore blur? No. It like fills you, it fills your pores in. Really? I need yeah. that because I have pretty sizable and pores. And it primes. Um, I am gonna do this thing where I like put. Like, look at what it looks like. It's like it's like chunky, like a it's like, apple like an sauce. oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Fill mm -hmm. those pores in, girl. Ooh. But you've got great skin. You have a. I was actually talking about this with Ye Yellow Spoon Girl, and we were talking about how you have like a perfect photogenic face. Like you just have like a main character in a game or something. Oh my in god. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know how to take compliments, no, I, so I Jennifer know, Coolidge too. has to come out. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. No, you're welcome. The best pleasure's mine. <laughs> you also do the best Jennifer Coolidge impression in the biz. I want to get better at like making my lips look like hers when she talks. She purses them. Oh my god. <laughs> but I can't, I don't have the Jenny Cool lips, you know? <laughs> Jenny Cool lips. Um, okay. okay, foundation time. Did you see my little beauty blenders and ice cream cone? Yeah, your stuff's really cute. I would say mine lacks personality. No. No, that's because that's, that's cute. And I, that's something I see a lot too, is I see that these makeup brands will really, like you got this thumper. Oh, this is my favorite. And then their name, oh, it's really dirty, don't look at that. Uh, like long ears, great big feet. Oh, I'm gonna so be cute. so upset when this runs out. I only recently, in the last year, started like actually buying Non CVS makeup. Oh, um, what prompted that? Well, I lived in my hometown with my dad for a year during the pandemic because, like, I didn't want to travel and then get him sick. So I was like, I'll just move there for a year. Mm -hmm. And the only stores we have in my hometown are Walmart and Ulta. Oh. And so when I wasn't at Walmart buying <laughs> puzzles, I was at Ulta just being like, sure. Why not? What was the kind of the biggest revelation or discovery that you made in switching from that? I was using the wrong foundation color for a very long time. Oh yeah. That's like, it's like, I feel like that's the thing of like, women use the wrong foundation color and mostly have the wrong bra size. Like yeah. nobody knows I, how to get either of those things accurate. Yeah. And then, but then ultimately when you, you're like, oh no, there's a, there's a system to figuring this out. And then it's like, oh, I can't believe I was living this way the whole time. Yeah. Also, like for me, I have a different tone of skin. Most most people, I feel like when it's summertime and you're getting more sun, yeah, your skin tone might change. I get really freckly in the summer, but I don't I don't go outside enough in the summer to actually get freckly anymore. I really want to try a chemical peel. Oh, but I don't want to go through the two weeks of like my skin peeling off and I'm not allowed to touch it. Yeah, that's why I've kind of heard about microneedling too. How do you apply your foundation? I, well, <laughs> I've kind of just been like, cause sometimes I'll do it this way, but then I'll just like Simba myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then blend it in. <laughs> I have been doing, as we can see in the playback, I've been doing a mix of using my fingers. I've just yeah. been like putting it on this. And, and like, I don't know how much is too much. And honestly, if I'm being transparent, on my day to day, I don't put it on my whole face. I really like. I I just do like a layer to even the skin tone, but it never hides anything. Yeah, I put it on under my eyes generally. Yeah. Do you or have you ever microbladed your eyebrows? Mm mm. I've gotten mine done, yeah. and they're like I got them done earlier this year. Mm hmm. I would just be afraid to hate it, and then you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I'll do it too. My, your spoolie. Um, yeah. I'd just be afraid to hate it because then microblading lasts for so long. Yeah, it's it's a big risk. And then you, anytime I've gotten it done, the day before I always Google microblading accident. Oh, fun. <laughs> and- uh, I love that. The last time I got it done, my brows were really dark after because they, yeah. they darken and then they, they lighten. Yeah. And I was, I, it was touch and go. I thought, is this it forever? But I still sometimes, Kind of like fill them in a little bit. Yeah, I have this. Um, this is like supposed to mimic microblading. 
Oh, because it's just you mm. draw in the brushes. Oh, yeah. Who makes like, that? It's arches and halos. You can just get it at, like Target. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, and then they have this one, which oh yeah does it's several like a at fork. a time. Yeah. yeah, I'm just doing a little bit. Yeah, cash. You know, what's the most expensive makeup that you buy? Probably concealer. Okay. Just because it's like a pretty normal thing to wear every yeah. day. Yeah, and I don't want something that's gonna like cake or be bad. I think, what about you? Before I started using the NYX uh, powder, I used to use the, what's it called? Hourglass, it's called Hourglass, I think. And that was like $50 for this. Oh, yeah. And then I think out of all of this would be my foundation, because this is 44. Usually, it's not bad. I, it's the the idea of like spending fifty dollars on a lipstick that I could no. never. I could mm -mm. never. But more power to you if you do. If that's you know what you're into. I also but. am jealous of people that can wear lipsticks all the time because my lips get so like dry. Yeah, I I can't, and we'll see why later. <laughs> When oh, I put it on. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I just I just always feel like it looks really like especially if I put it on and then I don't wipe it kind of off. I yeah. feel like it looks really goofy on me. Yeah, I guess I should do that too. <laughs> They're little pebbles. It's falling apart. <laughs> they are pebbles. <laughs> and I found that when it's broken into pebbles, it goes on better. Oh actually. yeah. Your bristles can get in there. Yeah. The bristles of this brush that I bought this morning can really get in there. <laughs> Where did you get the brush? Sorry. <laughs> I like I ran, this. literally ran in and then ran out. I so. love that you and I both went, we were like, oh, we need to get stuff for yeah. this thing tomorrow. <laughs> for this casual makeup show. <laughs> I've just used what you usually use. Hey, bring your makeup bag. I have to buy a whole new bag. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the bag that I'm using, I think was a free bag. <laughs> That's like a, um, a swag bag that you would get. Yeah, it's so sad. Um, I love it. What were we talking about before? Where were we talking about? Oh, you wanted. You were saying that you wanted to perfect your Jennifer Coolidge so much. Well, my goal overall is to get more voice acting roles because mm -hmm. I love doing it. Because I think people you, now you're like a content creator. Yeah. You do voice acting. Yeah. You're a performer. Yeah, and like anytime I play a game, I always give them voices when there's like text lines. You it's just to. very fun. But to be the like Jessica Coldridge NPC in any game, where it's like, we couldn't book Jennifer Coolidge, <laughs> but we booked this girl who can do a really good impression of her. And then <laughs> there's like a quest line in the new God Wait. of War where it's like, oh my God, you gotta go get a, a one of those schwanky little sausages from a cart down the street. Kratos, is it my understanding that your wife is dead? <laughs> so what you're saying is uh, you're on the market again. I might know someone. <laughs> and it might be me. I, it's just, yeah. here's the thing, is that you, you offering to do the counterfeit Jennifer Coolidge in video yeah, games. Yes. It presupposes that there is a huge demand for Jennifer Coolidge to already be in video games. So much so that- Everyone's been asking for it. It's like every E3, I see it in like Twitch chat and in comments. Like, Give us more Jenny. Yeah, where is JC, JC? Where's the Coolidge? Yeah. Please. And you oh, know, man. I'll if they, provide. If they did a Cool World <gasps> remake, it was Coolidge World. Oh. oh, man, this stuff is gonna be all over my face. That's another thing too. Fallout. Oh, no. Usually people, like, they, they can do their eye makeup yeah. and they can, not me. I just smear it, I smear it on. Did you think I was saying Fallout like the game? Oh, what were you saying? Fallout like. Oh, I thought you were still like Jennifer Coolidge in Fallout. <laughs> no, no. It's Where's a the makeup brotherhood? <laughs> Ezio. <laughs> Ezio, climb. Climb, Ezio. You can do it. He like jumps into a hay bale and there's just a <laughs> random woman in PC that walks by and it's like, ah, oh, it's raining cats and dogs out here. <laughs> oh. I have an eyelash curler <gasps> that typically I guess I would take my blow dryer. It, and this is a special occasion. Take my blow dryer and I would blow dry Make it, it like heat warm, it up a little yeah. bit, burn my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Do I dare try to use any kind of a dark? You're putting on a darker eyeshadow. I always go with like this 
lighter pink, and then I do with the friend darker. owl. Friend owl, and then I go in with long ears. Uh huh. Okay. Sometimes I'll put Miss Bunny in the corner. <laughs> Nobody puts Miss Bunny in the corner. <laughs> I, maybe I'll try. Oh no. Branch out. <laughs> yeah, this would be an evening look for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A dark evening, like a really dark evening. <laughs> like a, in a movie theater like, evening. Yeah, if somebody turned off all the lights in the world. <laughs> a power outage. No, I wish, I wish I had like better tips to impart to people, but all really I have is buy the travel mascara. My philosophy is just focus on your eyes and your eyebrows. Sometimes I'll put like a tiny bit of lip stain on and cause I like definitely overdo my foundation and then my lips look pale. Remember that? I don't know if y'all remember this trend. There was a trend five years ago where we would put concealer on our lips. Yes. I hated it. Why? Yeah, I don't think that's for me. Yeah, that's not the way that's I not do for makeup. Me. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm gonna take some pencil eyeliner. Ooh. And just kind of, because I have very, very, very light eyelashes. Oh, these are from the same... They're Tarte, yeah. I love that. I, and I really hadn't used Tarte before, but I love this mascara, which Lash Paint. Yeah. I, I think is maybe one of the best mascara, mascaras I've tried in a long time. This is a, it's a pencil on one side and then liquid on the other. Yeah. And it's pretty good. I love Duo. Two for one deal. Yeah. And like I said, like I have such light eyelashes that if I don't wear mascara, you can't see them. Mm -hmm. So I will kind of do like a really light eyeliner thing. And then I'll go over it now probably with liquid eyeliner. Have you ever smudged out your pencil? What is, the, oh, like taking a, a smudger and like. And then put liquid on top. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that sometimes. So maybe you've seen on my Instagram, my dog Remy, who is the light of my life. I love him so much. I am very, very particular about what I feed him and specifically what kind of treats I give him. Because sometimes you go to a pet store, you pick up a bag of dog treats and you don't recognize a single ingredient that's listed on the back of it. It's just a bunch of stuff like nitrates, nitrites, stuff that sounds like you would put it into a beaker in a high school chemistry class, and that's not what I wanna be feeding to my dog. And thankfully, Colorado Pet Treats is challenging the ways that things are done by creating these single ingredient pet treats without any fillers or preservatives. And I give them to Remy and he loves them. There's a sweet potato chip one that he goes nuts for, some bison treats. And I also love that as a woman owned company, Colorado Pet Treats prioritizes diversity diversity and social responsibility and everything that they do, which we completely love and support. So stop settling for unhealthy, overpriced dog treats and make the switch to Colorado Pet Treats. Trust us, your dog will thank you. Visit coloradopettreats.com and use the code BLEND10 at checkout for 10% off your order. That's B-L-E-N-D 10, one zero, at checkout. Thank you, Colorado Pet Treats. Hey everybody, Elise here. We are currently experiencing some really, really bad June gloom here in LA. If you don't know what that is, it's when the sky is so gray, but like a pale, pale, really light blinding gray that it's, it's not sunny and it's not fun, but you still really, really need sunglasses when you go outside, which is why I am so grateful that Shady Rays have these new tangle-free aviators. They're these bad boys. They do not get tangled or stuck in your hair when you put them on your head, which is such an amazing feature because anytime I do that, my hair always gets ripped out with normal sunglasses, normal sunglasses. Now with these amazing uh, patent pending nose piece Shady Rays, they never get tangled. I love them. These are my go-to every single day sunglasses, but they also look really nice so I can dress them up too. Plus, Shady Rays offers the most insane protection plan in all of eyewear. If you lose or break a pair, they will replace them even on day one, no questions asked. They are the absolute best. And if you don't love them, you can exchange them for a new pair or even return them for free within 30 days. I don't think you'll be doing that though. So like me, if you're currently dealing with the doom gloom or maybe you're a lucky person who is experiencing a lot of sunshine, which I'm envious of you right now, you definitely wanna get your hands on a pair of Shady Rays. And exclusively for our viewers, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. 
head to shadyrays.com slash tangle free and use code blend B L E N D for 30% off. They are best selling tangle free aviators and much more. So save before they sell out and try for yourself. The shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Thank you so much. Shady rays. Is that what you typically do? Uh, when I'm going for like a smoky eye, I generally go for my middle school winged look. Yeah. That's just what I feel I'm good at. I went to middle school in the early 2000s, so I have like no good makeup looks to harken back to. But I guess the 2000s are coming back now, right? They are. Every time I think of 2000s fashion, I think of Sarah Michelle Gellar. She was the best. There was this look for a while, which was like, do your hair and then flip it out at the ends. Yeah. <laughs> like this. And she was the best at yeah, that. Yeah, especially in her Buffy era. I saw her once in person and she was she was pretty tiny. She was in Scooby-Doo, live action. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal film. Oh, James Gunn. Yeah. Yeah. And it was supposed to be rated R. Could you imagine if we had gotten that? Do you know that most of the movie, they CGI'd a shirt over Velma because she had such big cleavage in the movie that her shirt is CGI I in the know movie. that. Because the studio came back and was like, hey, Really? Bud. I didn't know that. Yeah. I feel like James Gunn could probably pitch it and get the script for it after, like, redeeming the DCEU with Suicide Squad. I really like the new Suicide Squad. And you like horror movies, too. Mm-hmm. Are you excited that Hayden Panettiere is coming back from Scream 7? 6? No, 6. Um, Scream's, like, one of my favorite films Me ever. Me too. I just didn't like the direction they took Scream 5. Me too. One of my biggest like issues with it was that they retconned Billy in the way that he's not supposed to be someone who has like a romantic connection. And they made it so he cheated on Sydney to have a kid. Yep. But like Billy's whole thing with Sydney is he only pursued her so he could get back at her. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is, there is a lot wrong. I'm like, I know that it was a pretty well liked movie. I have a lot of issues yeah. with Scream Five. There, there's a lot that it was cool to see Billy on screen again, even as like, uh, what's what would it even be called? Like a hallucination. <laughs> <laughs> it was really silly, and I like that. But I, I thought that Stu should have had a bigger part in the motivation. Like if the killer had been Stu's brother or something. Well, canonically, he's still alive. Because in Scream 2, the script, they cut out one of the scenes, but in the script, he was supposed to, they were supposed to visit him in prison. Oh, yeah. So like, Stu should have been the one yeah. that they went to. It should have been that like, Jack Quaid was like Stu's brother or something. Yeah. Like that. Or even like Stu, uh, like married a fangirl mm -hmm. in, in jail. <sighs> But this isn't the Scream podcast. No. Unfortunately. So I could talk about Scream mm -hmm. all day. Do you have a favorite horror icon? Uh, I mean, Ghostface is like my boy. Mm -hmm. He's my guy. But I'm also a real big Bubba from Texas Chainsaw. Uh-huh. And my shoulder tattoo is Mother from The Ritual. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yes. cool. A Norse god created just for a horror movie. I love Freddy Krueger. He's a good one. I Isn't really great? like Freddy. I don't I, like what they did to him in the reboot, but I like Freddy. Yeah. I don't like what he stands for, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like him. Um, and I, oh well, no, that's not true. But I, I like his pizzazz, his yeah. one-liners. Yeah, his wit. He's, he makes it fun Yeah. when he uh, murders people and keeps them from sleeping. Nightmare on Dream or Nightmare Three Dream Warriors is great. I actually haven't watched past the first Nightmare, and then I watched the reboot one where um, they like micro dose their sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say the the first one's a great, a classic. The second one's not that great. Third one's great. The fourth one's okay. The fifth one's kind of weird. The fifth one fifth one brings in like Freddy's daughter. <laughs> Yeah, what happened? It's like, the first one's great, the second one, not that great. Third, pretty good. Fourth, uh, decent. I'm like, no, where are we? Oh, okay, I do have another tip. Okay. And it's Vaseline lip therapy. I love that stuff. It's the best. Like, yeah. 
As someone from a cold climate, I cannot tell you how much this is the holy grail of yeah. like if you've got chapped lips, this is this is the thing. Have you ever done their like flavored ones or not flavored? Oh, but... and like the rose one. I love yeah. the rose one. Mm -hmm. I have one of those in my bag. But this, like, I put this on before I go to sleep. It's the best. Do you slug, as the internet calls it? I feel like my train of thought's <laughs> at a completely different spot. This is something that I've been doing my whole life, and I recently saw that it, now it's this hot makeup technique, but okay. slugging, where people will, t before they go to bed, they'll take a dense cream, like a Vaseline or a Nivea cream. Yeah. And they'll put it under their eyes. And like, if you have any other dry spots, just like put it over like a thin, or not really thin, like a thick yeah. like layer. And they call it slugging. But like, I've done that my whole life. My, my mom, like with Nivea cream, always does that. Slugging. Yeah. But it's great because it creates this barrier that yeah. locks in moisture. Yeah. I have a... Uh... I'm probably gonna butcher the name of this. Lan Laniege? Laniege? Oh, yeah, Laniege, yeah. Yeah, I have the water sleep mask oh, where you're yep. supposed to slather it on your face mm -hmm. and it's really thick and then you go to bed. And I have their lip one too. I, so I've I guess I've been slugging. I've had the pink one where it comes with the little applicator. Yeah, and, yeah. And then I eventually just gave up and started putting it on with my finger. You were doing that thing with your lips. I almost put mascara on my lips. Oh. <laughs> you were doing that and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use blush or do contouring of any kind? I have blush and contour. I don't think the contour, um, it broke. So this was the light shade that I would use. And this makes me look bruised, so I don't contour anymore. But this blush is very special to me because it's the blush that my mom always wore. And I found that CoverGirl still makes it, so oh. I bought it. And even if it doesn't match my look, I always wear it. Cover girl. <laughs> I could be my can model for them. Maybe it is Maybelline. <laughs> oh my god. No, I think it's just me. <laughs> What's that smell? Is it Maybelline? <laughs> Have you seen her Uber Eats commercial? No, I didn't know she did commercials for it Uber Eats. It was for the Super Bowl. Oh, she's getting, she's booking she Super got, Bowl? She got a Super Bowl Uber Eats commercial. And it's her just like getting anything from Uber Eats because they're Postmates too. She'll just get like a, a mascara and she'll be like, Oh, since I got it from Uber Eats, does that mean I can eat it? <laughs> oh, Jenny. Oh. I'm gonna show you why I don't wear lipstick. I'm so ready for this. I'm so ready to tell you you're wrong. I just, I, I like don't have like huge lips, but I feel like there's just something about them that when I put a lot of lipstick on, they look goofy. I feel like I've had moments like that though. And also I think it's because like I don't have super prominent eye feature. Like my eyes, my lashes are so light. I don't wear a ton of eye makeup. The lipstick just stands out a lot. I think that's the thing though. I heard Jeremy Renner used to be a makeup artist before he became an actor. And I remember he did an interview where they asked him about it. He was like, you gotta balance it out. Mm -hmm. If you do strong lips, you have to have strong eyes. I can't do that. Mm. I don't know, and look at this. It's like, it's too much. It doesn't look too much. <laughs> you, you know what, you're right. <laughs> Take that shit off. <laughs> well, usually if I do put something on my lips, I put it on and then I wipe it off. For that little touch. Mm -hmm. I think there's so much to be said with makeup for doing what works for you. Mm -hmm. and what flat, like not following those trends. Well, like, oh. Mm. Oh. That's a All look. Right. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling, uh... I feel like I have a comb over. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like Pete Wentz. <laughs> like, like it's kind of dance, dance. Emo. You know? Wait, so are you a big emo? Oh, <laughs> huge emo. Uh oh. <laughs> you know it's not popular, right? No, it's not. It's not a phase, though. Oh, really? Mm -mm. Did people tell you that? <laughs> My mom did. <laughs> Like, no. No, I still hear. I still listen to their very first album on Spotify. I hear you. I was listening to some Pearl Jam on the way over, so. On the way over, I was listening to the Muppets soundtrack. Were you? I listened to the entire first movie, and I got to one of my favorite songs of Most Wanted, where Constantine is like, you want a puppy dog? I'll give it to you. <laughs> no, I forgot that you're a Muppets Most Wanted apologist. <gasps> Do you not like that movie? It's not, it's, I, here's the thing is I really like the Jason Siegel 
2011 yeah. Muppets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that was really great to the spirit of the Muppets. I was most wanted. I didn't love. I think I wanted it to be more like Muppet, Great Muppet Caper esque. Yeah. But I just, I just couldn't. I just like how ridiculous Constantine is. I like that. I like that yeah. they took the swing with, with him. Yeah. By the way, I was watching, forgetting Sarah Marshall last night. She's great. Jason Segal sings Rainbow Connection in that. Or no, he sings the Muppet theme song. Yeah. And that was five years before he was in the Muppets. Yeah. Well, he's a lifelong Muppets fan. There's a <gasps> there's a Dracula musical in yeah. there. Yeah. 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 And he shows his penis. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was like putting lights up in my studio and the first time when Sarah comes to like break up with his character and it's just it pulls out and he's naked. I I had to rewind it. I was like, surely I didn't see that. Yeah. There you know, when I was a kid it was not cool to like the Muppets. I feel like the same for me. But now I meet lots of adults that love the Muppets. Yeah. And it's cool now. It's cool now. So my very first time watching anything Muppets was like two and a half years ago. One of my mods um, and a few of my community members were like, we're going to sit you down and <gasps> make you watch this. So are there Muppet movies you haven't seen? Like, have you seen Muppet Treasure Island? <gasps> I know. I know. I have so much Muppet stuff. Oh my god. I know. But you're so lucky because you get to experience it all for the first time. I'm really excited about it. That's <laughs> why so if I could brainwash myself, I would just, or not, wipe my memory. Yeah. I think the same thing about the movie Jumper. If I could wipe my memory and rewatch that movie for the first time. I was kind of hoping Jumper wouldn't come up <laughs> during this, but I guess I should have expected it. You have to expect it. <laughs> so, do you just love Hayden Christensen? Yeah. Yeah. Because I like Life is a House, Jumper. Star Wars. Wait, is Life is Wait, what's the one with Kevin Klein that he's in? Life is that's a life house? Is the house where he plays the, the like, son? The son that's like metal. Yeah, he's bad. He's an emo. Yeah. And it's not a face. Yeah, yes. it's not a face. Oh. Man, I haven't thought of that movie in 15 years at least. Yeah. I was like, well, I have to watch the Hayden movie that he got nominated and like won an Academy Award for it, or like a really big award for it. And then I watched it and was like, this is kind of just ridiculous. And then I cried at the end. Yeah. I'm like, this is one of my favorite movies. Okay. Do you, I don't know if you know this about me, but I've seen Hayden Christensen in person at a Jamba Juice. He parked illegally in the fire Just lane. Jamba Juice? <laughs> <laughs> Completely different takeaway from that. Are you done your makeup? I am actually finished. Me too, I think. Yeah, I don't know if this is any good, but it's done. I really like your eyeshadow. Oh, thanks. It's kind of 2000s. It's, it wasn't a phase. Oh. So, but this was wonderful. Thanks yeah. for coming and doing this, Mika. Thank you. Th thanks for letting me like get ready here. For the next. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have a really relaxing morning where I woke up and was like, oh, I don't have to do my makeup before I leave. No. I can go play a video game really quick. Yeah, I said, don't come camera ready. Yeah. Where can people find you and your content and learn more about your love for Hayden Christensen and Jumper? Uh, you can find me on any social media site at RIP Mika. I tweet like 20 times a day. <laughs> um, and then I have an active YouTube and Twitch channel. Is it also RIP Mika? All RIP oh, Mika okay. everywhere. Luckily, no one was uh, grieving someone named Mika. So I got to take that handle. Oh, but what if you took that away from someone that will need to? <laughs> I always morbidly think about like, if I die early, oh, it's like already ready for memorial pages. Yeah, it's like Swedish death cleaning. You prepared it yeah. for your loved ones. Yeah, great, great time to end yeah. on this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> just mentally erase everything that we just said. Mm -hmm. Fix it in post. Do you want to go get a hot dog? Oh, yeah, I really want to get a hot dog real bad. All right, let's go get, <laughs> <laughs> let's go get some hot dogs. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Barbie's on the run, accused of killing her new boyfriend, Kenneth, in cold blood. Now her two best friends, Georgette and Candy, have to catch the real killer and clear Barbie's name before it's too late. It is time for dolls, drama, and death in our new parody TTRPG series, Barbie Didn't Do It. Barbie Didn't Do It premieres June 27th, so subscribe to the Must Be Dice podcast feed to listen or watch the full video versions on youtube.com slash at funhouse2. I love seeing beauty besties doing their makeup on Let's Blend. For more shows, make sure you subscribe to All Good No Worries. And for our weekly podcast, check out Always Open every single Tuesday. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Mwah.